Ready. Aim. Shoot. Welcome to Arrows of Revival. God wants to use you as an arrow in his revival. And he's releasing arrows across the world for a world revival. Tune in as we discuss these arrows. Greetings. This is Bishop Reed here at my wife, Gailene Reed, for another episode of Arrows of Revival. And this week, we're going to be talking about or continue talking about making major life decisions, which we started talking about last week, yes. making major life decisions. And when we're talking about making major life decisions, we're talking about those big decisions like who to marry, yes. when to get married, uh, what church would you go to, um, uh, which school should I attend? Should I move to this new place? Should I make a change in my career? What career should I change to? Yeah. Um, you know, things of, of that nature. Um, what ministry direction should I go in? Uh, should I move to a certain place? So things like this. Should I enter into this new business agreement? Making those major life decisions. Yeah. And uh, last week, we began by talking about the pitfalls major decisions, pitfalls we can make. And some of the pitfalls we find we talked about was not making decisions based on fear. Yes. Um, don't draw back from doing things because of fear. Don't say no to that new business because of fear. Don't say no to that new ministry that God is trying to move you into because of fear. Um, or it could be do not make decision out of seeking financial riches. That doesn't mean you, you should not do things to increase your wealth. But what it does mean is do not chase after decisions just out of wanting to be rich. And uh, uh, don't make the pitfall or don't fall into the into the hole or the pitfall of making agreements mm -hmm. without prayer. Yes. Making agreements without prayer. That's right. Uh, we also talk about family bondages, mm -hmm. you know, like refusing to get married or I've met folks who are afraid to get married or afraid that want me happening in marriage because when they looked in their own family, they didn't see good marriages. Right, right. Uh, another pitfall is following emotional triggers, making a decision because you're angry, mm -hmm. making a decision because somebody close to you just died and you make a major decision that uh, really was not good to make, but because of the grief you were experiencing, you made that decision. Right. Uh, some have made a decision to leave a church because mm -hmm. they didn't get to marry the person they wanted to. Exactly. Do not make major decisions out of emotional triggers. Yes, and also fear. Yes. Um, you know, people make, a, a lot of people make decisions uh, based on fear. Yeah. Too. Uh, and a lot of time, we all also have to watch to not make decision out of fear because when you make decision out of fear, um, the decision is not, you know, it, it's, it, it, it has a breakdown in it even before you make it because it was made out of the spirit of fear. Yes. Another, another thing that's a pitfall in making decisions is being double minded, <laughs> uh -huh. making a double minded decision that just being indecisive. Yes. It, it, when you're double minded or being indecisive, it, you're allowing circumstances to make the decision for you. <laughs> so instead yeah. of deciding on what to do, you de you let the chips fall where they may, so to speak. And that can be a major mistake in um, making decisions. Decision, you, yeah. you, you, you know that um, you're going to have to look for a new job because maybe your business, your job is closing down. That company you're at is closing down. Mm -hmm. and you can't decide where, where to go, what to do. And you just stay undecided. And now, uh, and the business shuts down and you end up in a terrible situation. Don't remain undecided or double-minded. And another major pitfall is listening to the wrong counselor. Yes. Listen to the wrong counselor. Very important. Yeah. Yeah. You go into the wrong person, a person who's not qualified to counsel you in that area. Uh, you know, you're seeking to get married mm -hmm. or you're married and and there's things happening in your marriage and you need to make some major decisions. And you go to somebody who has who a bad marriage or is not married at all to help you with that decision and may not be the best person if they're not knowledgeable in that area. Mm -hmm. So this week, we're going to talk about some of the choices you should make 
the choices you should make so that when you're making those major life decisions, you know you're walking in the will of God. You know you're walking in the correct path. So when you're about to make a major life decision, those life-changing decisions, how do you make them? What choices do you make? And the first thing is you want to choose God's choice. Amen. I mean, it sounds simple, yeah. but uh, we're going to start right there. Choose God's choice. choice. And, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5, that trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. Mm -hmm. Don't choose your own thing. Choose God's choice. It says in verse verse 6 of Proverbs 3, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, acknowledge God, Mm -hmm. and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 says, be not wise in your own eyes, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So you want to choose God's choice. Whatever it is you're doing, choose God's choice. Well, how do you choose God's choice? Well, acknowledge God. Whatever plan you're making, don't just plan for your own personal success. Don't just plan for your own thing. You want to make sure you're acknowledging God in everything you do. You're making a major life decision to move to a new place to change careers, and you do not acknowledge God in it? Say, God, which place should I go to? Lord, the Bible says that God will lead his children. Choose his choice. Acknowledge him in the decisions you're making. And to do that, you got to follow the Bible. Choosing God's choice means following the word of God. Yes, You're going to get married. You're a believer. You're a Christian. You're going to get married. Choosing God's choice means you're not going to marry an unbeliever. That's right. Couldn't make a major decision to get married and marry an unbeliever because that would not be in the word of God. That would not be God's choice. Choose God's choice. You- and you know what? It's important to choose God's choice because if you don't choose who God chooses and you choose, you know, pertaining to marriage, when you choose, um, when you go and you choose, make your own choice without God in it, guess what? If it's marriage, you're stuck in that choice. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, after that, you'd have to ask yeah. God for grace, you know ask God to forgive you, and ask for our, mercy. Our, our, our bishop, uh, our, our general overseer always said that when you make a choice for marriage and you do it, that's the right choice. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> uh, once you have made the choice, it, there's no way out. Once the choice is made yeah. and, and, once and, the choice is and made. You execute on the choice, that's the choice. But, this, but yeah. this, what we're talking about, is when you're making the choice. Yeah. Choose right. God's choice. You got to choose God's choice. Yeah. Choose God's choice. Right. I mean, you, you don't want to enter into a business and you know the business is crooked. You know the business is not in line with God's will. And here you are entering into partnership. Choose God's choice. That's the first thing that you want to do in whatever major life decision you're making. You want to choose God's choice. Yeah. You don't want to move to a new place. And you know in your heart that God wants you to remain where you are for a certain thing or for a certain ministry or for a vision he has given you. And you move where you want to go outside of God's will. You don't, you don't, you don't want to be that woman who you, you, you feel like you want to move to California and your husband is not ready to move or don't want to move. And you decide you're going to separate and go on your own. Choose God's choice. So that's and the God's first thing. choice is his word. His word. Amen. Do what he says, what Amen. God says in his word. Amen. That's his choice. Psalm 109 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yes. You can know the way to go by the word of God. Uh-huh. Ask God if something is his will. Pray about the decisions you're going to make. The Bible says in James 4, verse 13, he said, Go to now. He that say today or tomorrow will go into such such a city and continue their year and buy and sell and get gain. James 4, 14. Whereas he know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanish away. So verse 15 of, of James 4. For that he ought to say, if the Lord will, 
we shall live yeah. and do this or do that. that. In other words, it's about God's will. The plans you're making in life. If it's the Lord will, I'll do this and do that. Always seek the will of God. Amen. It's through his word. Yes. Take time to acknowledge him. Yeah. You're you're putting your daughter or your son in college. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just make any decision. Don't just say, okay, son, daughter, make any decision you want to. Acknowledge God. Say, Lord, please lead my daughter. Please lead my son to the right place. Get your son. Get your daughter. And say, let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to lead you to the right college. Don't just make it based on what others say, based on the information that is out there. God know it all things. Acknowledge God in your decision. So the first thing is choose God's choice. That's right. Sounds simple, but it simply means to follow his word. And it simply means to acknowledge him in everything that you do. In everything that you do, acknowledge the Lord. Praise God. So the next thing, not only choose God's, God's choice, but number two, choose revelation. Mm -hmm. Choose revelation. Now, we started with choose God's choice because that's looking at his word and making sure you acknowledge him in whatever you do. Choose revelation means God will often reveal things to you. So there may be some things that you're not clear about. It's not in his word. Like you want to change careers. The, the Bible doesn't necessarily tell you, you know, be a police officer or be a teacher. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, both choices would be within God's will according to his word. Mm -hmm. um, so you may not be clear which one to go to. Um, you may acknowledge God in it, but you're still not sure. So God will reveal things. He can reveal it by his Holy Spirit speaking to you. He can reveal it through a vision, through a dream. He can reveal it through a word of prophecy from someone. Uh, when God does reveal things to you, choose revelation. Abraham made a very important decision because of a revelation from God. In Genesis 12, verse 1, that now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get out of your country from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. So God told Abraham, leave your place. I'm going to show you a particular land. Yeah. And Abraham made that decision. That was a major life decision, yeah, leaving yeah. his family and his household. Yeah. The man was about 75 years when he left. So for, for, for 75 years of his life, he was living in a certain country yeah. with his own people. He got to him to leave. And he decided to do that and God blessed him. Uh -huh. So in the same way, you have looked into God's word. You have acknowledged God. You have placed your, your whatever decision you're trying to make him prior. You're still not sure what to do. Look for God. God may just reveal something to you in a dream, in a vision, in a word of prophecy. And when God does that, you want to choose revelation. God may speak a word to you or give a, a vision to you. When that happens, you want to make sure it's confirmed. You have a vision or a dream. Uh, don't just get up and run with a vision or a dream. It could just be in your head. You could have had a dream and it could have just been in your own mind. Maybe you have a desire to go into a certain career or a desire to move to a certain place. Or maybe you like a particular uh, lady or a particular man and, and you think that's the one you should marry uh, and you dream about it. Right. Okay. So you want to test that dream. How do you test that dream? Well, at first, it has to agree with the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's choosing God's choice. Yes. Uh, but other than agreeing with the word of God, you want to look for it to be confirmed. What do I mean by that? Confirm meaning it, it you have you have seen a repeat of that revelation, maybe through your pastor, maybe through a man or woman of God who who speaks something similar or that confirms what you perceive you have you have received from God in a revelation or a vision or dream. Look for confirmation. Or God may repeat it again in a different way. Yes. Yeah. So look for confirmation, confirmation. of that revelation yeah. and choose to go in the way of that revelation. You may receive a prophetic word. God does speak by prophecy. He could give a prophetic revelation to yeah. somebody, um, to a leader in your church, to a pastor, to a prophet in your church. Um, God may send a word and said, you know, the Lord spoke to me that this is the thing you should do. 
Now, if you have a personal decision you're making, oftentimes when you get a prophetic word, it will be a confirmation yes, of yes. something the Lord has shown you, yes. or maybe the Lord was tugging at your heart yes. to go in a certain direction. And then God sends a man of God, God sends a pastor, God sends a woman of God to speak to you, say, you know, I believe God wants you to go in this way, or, or the Lord has shown me you doing such and such a thing. And it confirms things the Lord has already been placed in on your heart. Amen. So choose God's choice, choose revelation. Number three, here, this, this one, choose faithfulness. Choose faithfulness. So choose God's choice, choose revelation, choose faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean by this? I mean by this is when it comes to making major life decisions, it will take place much easier. You'll know the right thing to do if you're doing all the daily faithful things. I'll put it a different way. If you are being faithful to God in attending church, faithful to God in giving your offering, giving your tithes, faithful to God in executing his word, doing what his word says on a consistent basis, serving him in the way you should, then what happens is when it's time for those major life decisions, it will be more clear because you have been faithful to God in the small matters. Amen. Let me share this scripture with you. The Bible says in Psalm 8, verse 34, it says, Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. The Psalm 8, verse 35, it says, For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Now, what I want to point that out to you is where it says in Proverbs 8, 34, blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates, yeah. waiting at the post of the door. Mm -hmm. If the only time you pray <laughs> is when you're ready to make a major life decision, it's, it, it's going to be <laughs> sure hard for you to you hear clearly from God. It doesn't mean it won't work, yeah. but it'll be harder to understand if, if God is speaking. Yeah. So, so here you are, you, you don't ever see God. You're not watching daily at the gates. Mm -hmm. You're not spending time with God. I spend time in his word. And then it comes time for you to uh, make a decision to move to a new place. And then you want to go and pray and fasting at that time. And it will be harder for you to understand what God is saying. Now, I'm not saying God is, God is a loving God. And God may make it clear to you. I'm not saying he won't. But what I am saying is that if you are daily, habitually seeking God, doing his will, attending church, serving him in the ministry as he has called you to, then when it comes time to meet those major decisions, it will be clear. As a matter of fact, before you even pray, God will show it to you because you've been faithful. Yes. Yeah. When you are faithful to him, God will show it to you even before you ask. Amen. He'll show you the direction you need to go in because you've been faithful in carrying out his will. So choose faithfulness. The Bible says in Luke 16, verse 10, he that is faithful in that which is least is also faithful also in much. Amen. Do small things well. Yes. Make choices daily that are aligned with your purpose, with the thing God has called you to do. Don't delay a leading from the Lord. Be faithful to God in doing what he's supposed to do, what you're called to do. And in seeking him daily and seeking his word daily. And when it becomes time to make that decision, God will show it to you clearly because you've been faithful. Like I said, many times he will show you even before you ask. Bless the Lord. I know throughout my life, there's been times I had to make major decisions. And I didn't need to go and fast and pray. It was just a compulsion came in my spirit mm -hmm. that we need to go. I remember we were I remember, Gail, we were here in New York yes. and it was time for us to leave New York. Yes. And uh, it was I didn't go on days of fasting and praying. God said, oh, this is the answer to New York. I just got that compulsion yes. in my spirit that it's time to You're go. Like stirring. Yeah, yeah. We knew it was time to leave, that it was this clear. And there was a need for prayer and fasting because we were already serving God in the ministry. We were already um, trying 
trying to do God's will in, in, in every effort we could make. And so as we were doing that, God just led. Yeah. It's the same way when we got married, when, mm-hmm. when, when God showed me my wife, I, I wasn't even planning for marriage yet. I, I was 17 years old. I wasn't planning for marriage yet. And, um, but why I was doing God's will. And in the midst of that, God just came with, 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 with a word about it. <laughs> I wasn't even asking for it. <laughs> and, uh, and God spoke to me concerning it. And I wasn't even asking God about it. I wasn't, I wasn't asking God specifically about you, but God spoke and said, that's, that's your wife. Why? Because we're doing God's will. I was on the mission field in Trinidad. You were on the mission field in Jamaica. Yeah. You weren't asking for a husband. No. And God spoke to you yeah. while you were doing his will. Amen. That's how it works. If you choose to be faithful in doing the will of God, God will direct you. So choose faithfulness. So choose God's choice. Choose revelation. Choose facial faithfulness. What else should we choose? Yep. Choose to follow a spiritual leader. Yes. That is very important. Um you know, in life decision making, you have to have, there have to be order in, in one's life when they're, when you're making a, um, a decision where it's going to be life changing and things are going to be different. You have to have a spiritual, you just can't go on on your own. You know, you have to seek the Lord, uh, you know, to find out what God wants you to do, but you also have to have somebody, a leader that you can go to, uh, to, to, to tell them what is happening in your life and also to help you pray, you know, about your, the decision that you're about to make. The Bible said one shall chase a thousand, but two shall put it to flight. So you know that the connection with somebody spiritually that, you know, a leader spiritually will, will uh, um, strengthen, uh, you know, the decision and, and, and make things more uh, powerful. You know, when 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 God is ready to work, because it's not only one, but it's it's two people standing in the gap. Um, Ruth one verse sixteen says, you know, Ruth said to to um to Naomi. To Naomi, it says, "Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and whither thou lodge, I will lodge." Thy people shall be my people in thy God, my God. And that is so very important because a lot of time, you know, people just want to do what they want to do and they don't want, um, you know, I've, I've heard people say things like, you know, I want to make a decision, but I don't want my leaders to know, yeah, to know about it because I want to be able to, I want to be able to make this decision freely and without anybody's influence. Well, guess what? They have to be influenced. Yeah. You're either going to have godly influence or you're going to have yeah. the other there, side. There's of influence, the influence in every decision and, you make. Yes, exactly. You, you may not know where the influence is coming from. Yeah. It may be something you heard on TV. Yeah. It may be a friend at work. Yeah. Somebody said something to you. Absolutely. You have an idea, but there's someone always influencing. Always, you. and sometimes influence can come through things that have happened to you in the past. Exactly. Um, it could come from things that you've heard. You know, things that you've seen. So. You know, we are people that is open to a lot of different things. Yes. You know, in influence is something that happens to us every day. Every yes, day in yes, life it does. is, you know, every day that we live, we are living to either choose, you know, to, to, to choose one influence over the other. So we are in a realm of influence. So, yes. you know, when people say things like they don't want influence in their life, they don't want leadership to influence them. To me, that's just foolishness because how could you, um, you know, how could you not want influence in your life? Because influence is happening regardless. So, you know, Ruth made it very clear, um, you know, that she was not going to leave her, you know, her her mother-in-law, but she was going to stay by. And it's an example to us to, for us to follow. Yes. You need someone in your life, a, yeah. s- a spiritual leader in your life who you can emulate. Yes. You got to have somebody to Ruth emulate. Ruth sticked with Naomi uh, and Paul encouraged Timothy yes. to emulate his life. Mm-hmm. The Bible says in, um, let's see, in 2 Timothy 3 verse 10, Paul, speaking to Timothy, said, Thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, 
faith, long suffering, charity, and patience. Yes. Paul was saying to Timothy, you, you know, you know my lifestyle. Yes, yes. You know how I live. Yeah. Pattern after that. Pattern after Emulate that. Emulate that. So Emulate there's that. two ways Amen. you can allow a spiritual leader to, to be an influence in your life so you made those godly decisions. One is to stick close to them. Yeah. Wherever they go, you go. Yeah. If they decide I'm going to Florida to continue the ministry, go there. They yes. decide I'm going to go to another country, continue the ministry, follow them. That's one way. Mm -hmm. God may lead you that way. But another way is you may not be exactly where they are, but you are emulating their lifestyle. Emulating their the lifestyle. things they, they, this kind of decisions they make, the way they live, mm -hmm. the way they carry their life. You adapt their faith. Yeah. You adapt their manner of living. You adapt their long suffering, their, their faith, their lifestyle. You pick it up also. The way they carry themselves in their marriage, you carry yourself in, in your marriage the same. The way they lead, you lead. Yes. The things that they do, you pattern after it. And you know what? Not, you know, I don't mean to cut, but you know, when I first got married, you know, and as a young woman, I, I didn't have a lot of, um, you know, godly influence around me. I got saved. My family was not in the church. I needed to follow someone. Mm -hmm. So I followed my, my bishop's, um, my bishop's wife. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, you know, I just followed whatever she did. I mean, you know, I, 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 I patterned the way she, she prayed because I didn't know how to pray. I needed to follow somebody that I heard praying. Yes. And I followed both of them. I, I was listening to how they pray because I didn't know how to pray. When I kneeled down, I didn't know what to say. I'm like, Lord, I don't know how to pray. What am I doing? Then I heard them do, you know, praying. And I just started to repeat exactly what they were repeating. You know, and also as a young woman, I didn't know, you know, I, I could, I didn't know certain to do certain things. So I followed after, um, my, my bishop's wife and I just started to do some of the things that I saw her do until this day I do you know some of the things that I've learned I still do it exactly the same exact way as I learned it so the instruction you know instruction you know of your leader seeing the way they just follow in the footstep there's nothing wrong with that no no there's no, nothing that's wrong actually with that. a, a great thing we, yeah. we all need someone who we can emulate after it's very important and there, there's issues that have been in in my life that through the advice of leaders over me, uh, I was able to come out of those things through yeah. their advice, uh, through their instruction. Right. Yes, and through their example and leadership, yes. I was able to get out of situations yeah. that I, I, I probably wouldn't know how to do it on my own. So another choice to make is to choose to follow to choose to, leadership. And then also as well, when, um, you know, that same anointing, you will find that that same anointing that's upon your leader, after a while of you following the footstep, that same anointing now starts to, to come on yes, you. Yes, God uses My spiritual God, leaders so to sharpen you as an arrow of yes, revival. Yes. Sharpen you as an to, arrow of revival. Yes. So you could, you could hit the bullseye. Right, because I mean, one day, you know, you will be a leader or you can be a leader. So yes, you know, that leader is there to leave for you something uh, for you to pass on. And I think it's very powerful the way that orchestrate that, you know, with leadership and stuff. It's just so powerful. So choose to follow a spiritual leader and going right after that, not only choose to follow a spiritual leader, but choose wise counsel. And that, and that falls right in line with following a spiritual leader. Choose wise counsel. The Bible said in Proverbs 20, 15, sorry, Proverbs 15, verse 22, it said, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. So you 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 have a plan, mm -hmm. you have a plan, and you just run off with your plan without seeking counseling. Yeah. Purposes are disappointed when there is no counseling. But in the multitude of counselors, those plans gets established. They get established. So yeah. you, so follow wise counsel, yeah. the counsel of your leaders, as we just discussed. The, the counsel of other men and women of God who may be knowledgeable, qualified, or experienced in different areas, mm -hmm. and they have the spiritual knowledge to give you, and they may have the actual their knowledge in that area to give you, whether it's finances or whether it's marriage or whether it's going into a career. They have the knowledge in those areas. They have proven themselves. They have been faithful, and they can help you in giving you wise advice, wise mm -hmm. counsel in those areas. Choose to follow wise counsel. It will make a difference 
in the decisions that you make. Praise God. And, you know, when you're choosing wise counsel, avoid ungodly advice. Yes. Not every advice is good. Some people are not qualified to give you advice. They have not proven themselves in that area. Do not take advice from them. And let me let me say this. If you find there's people in your church where you're serving who are against the teachings of your church or against your the leadership in your church, uh-huh. don't seek advice from them. That's right. People who are who are disorderly and disrespectful to leadership are not the kind of folks that you want to advise you in the things you're doing. Yes. They won't they won't advise you in the right way. Right. Uh, you, th- you see folks who are trying to divide people and uh, trying to tear people apart in your church community, in your local church. Those are not the people to seek advice from. Mm-hmm. Their advice can be very destructive. Mm-hmm. Choose godly and wise counsel. Look for a biblical counselor mm-hmm. who will advise you in the way of God's word. So not only choose wise counsel. So for us to go over it again, choose God's choice. That was number one. Number two was choose revelation. Number three, choose faithfulness. Choose, number four, choose to follow a spiritual leader. Number five, choose wise counsel. Number six, choose to consider collected information or consider information Mm -hmm. that you collect. What I mean by that? Don't make any major decisions without getting some information. Even if you feel like God is leading you to move to a new city, God is leading you to move to Florida. You feel like the next step for me to go to, God is showing me to go to Florida. Even though it may be the leading of the Lord, still, it is prudent and wise to gather some information about Florida. <laughs> don't just get up and just run off to Florida and uh, you don't know what what job you're going to have. You don't know where you, you're not sure where you're going to live. You don't show sure how things work. Gather information. Mm-hmm. Collect information. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse 8, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. Wow. But the folly of mm-hmm. fools is deceit. Yes. Proverbs 4, 26, it says, ponder the path of your feet. Ponder the steps you're taking and let all thy ways be established. Mm-hmm. So look into what you're doing. Gather information about what you're doing. You know, when Isaac, Abraham's son, was looking to get married, he got instruction from Abraham. Abraham left instruction with his servant to help Isaac in in, in seeking his his wife. So there Isaac got got instruction from a spiritual leader. But not only that, when Isaac saw Rebecca, who he would later marry, he didn't just like run and say, oh, this girl looks beautiful. I'm going to marry her. He watched her. Yes. He was collecting information. He watched her. He gathered information from observation. Yeah. <laughs> he watched her. He, he looked at her and he saw her kindness. Mm-hmm. He, he tested. He actually tested her. He was conducting like an investigation. He was doing some research. He tested her to see if she would be willing to serve him kindly. And when he saw her kindness, plus the or beauty that she already had, that's when he made the, the decision. Mm-hmm. So he gathered information. Gather information. Find out about uh, whatever step you're about to take. You're looking into a different uh, career. Gather information about the career. See if it's something that really fits who you are. You're looking to get married and you think this is the right person. Find out about them. How their character how, how do they treat their family? Uh, oh, how is their Christian life? Yes. You got to find collect information about them and it will help direct your path. Yes. Ponder the path yes. of your feet Amen. and let all thy steps be established. Mm-hmm. And the last one, choose to sacrifice. sacrifice. Yes. Choose to sacrifice. Some decisions is going to require a sacrifice. Some may, especially we talk about major decisions, it's going to require a sacrifice. It may mean giving up on past things. As your 43, 18 said, remember he not the former things, neither the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, God says. Now it shall spring forth. So 
your choice you're making may require you to make a sacrifice. It may require you to forget about some old things. Mm-hmm. Perhaps you have to, to leave the church you're in. Perhaps you have to make that sacrifice, even though you love that church. Maybe God wants you to go out in your own ministry. Mm-hmm. Maybe God wants you to move to a different place, and you would have to be in a new ministry there. That sacrifice may be required. It may not be, but God sometimes will lead in that direction. You got to know, you got to forget about the former things, whatever you were doing before. Choose to sacrifice. Some breakthroughs do not come unless you make a major sacrifice. You take a major risk. It's like like we said before, we left New York. Uh, when we left New York before, we were making a major sacrifice because it was all that we knew was at was in the New York, was in the east side of the USA. And to make a decision to get up and go to the southern side of USA, where we hardly knew uh, many, we didn't know much, was a sacrifice. But at that point in our life, it was a sacrifice that we needed to make for certain things to happen in our life. Praise God. Because God is a God that you will even make a way in the wilderness. God is a God that will put rivers in the desert. Yeah. So even though you may be going into areas that are unsure, God can make a way even in those unsure places. And you have to be willing to make that sacrifice. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. So the right the major life decision you need to make, choose God's choice. Choose revelation. Choose faithfulness. Choose to follow a spiritual leader. Praise God. Choose wise counsel. Choose to consider collected information and choose to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. To sacrifice. Amen. There's some decisions that you make that you have to decide them right away. Yes. Maybe because of timing, you know, your the job that you're on is about to close down and you got to make a decision by next week. When that's the case, go through these steps. Yes. You know, make sure you look in God's word, choose God's choice, seek God for revelation. Bless the Lord. Make sure you're being faithful in the things that you know you already should be doing. You know, look for the advice from a spiritual leader. Uh, choose, get counsel on the matter. Uh, choose to not only get counsel on the matter, but collect the information that you need to collect concerning the matter. Mm-hmm. And if it's something that you need to make a sacrifice, be ready to make that sacrifice. But if you need to make a decision immediately, you, you would need to, you have to. Remember the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But maybe some things can wait. If it's something that can wait, set a date. Set a date. Yes. If it's something not immediate, set a date. Amen. And you seek the Lord, collect information, seek the, the advice of your leaders, uh, seek counseling, praise God, continue praying about it, see if God will reveal something to you, and set a time where you make that decision. But don't stay double-minded. Don't stay undecided because... Uh, you don't want to keep yourself in a place where you're you're double-minded. Amen. Glory to God. And for some decisions, do more than the normal. Some deci- sometimes you got to make a breakthrough decision. <laughs> make a breakthrough decision. You need something to change. You need to make a leap in some area of your life. And you need to make that major sacrificial decision in order to break through. Go ahead and do that. Bless the Lord. We're going to pray that the Lord will lead you and the Lord will direct you, that you'll make those major life decisions according to His will. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for all the listeners. We pray, God, that as they make those decisions in their life, dear Lord, there's someone listening that, that, that maybe need to make a decision to be married. There's someone listening who is, is ready to make a, a career decision or deciding to go into ministry full time. There's someone listening, God, who, Oh, they, they're about to move to a new place. And Father, they, they need your direction, your leadership. Father, lead them, direct them, reveal unto them, God. Order their steps according to your will. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Jesus. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Amen. Lord, for your leading. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 If you have a question, 
about any topic about making decisions or any other topic you've heard us talk about, go ahead and send in your questions to hello at revivalarrows.com. That's hello at revivalarrows.com. Send in your questions and uh, we're going to do our best to answer. God bless you and see you again next time for another episode of Arrows of Revival. Again, I'm Bishop Reed. And I'm Gailene Reed. God bless you. God bless. Thank you for listening to Arrows of Revival. To hear other episodes, go to RevivalArrows.com. Again, our website is RevivalArrows.com. To contact us, email hello at RevivalArrows.com. Send us an email to hello at RevivalArrows.com. And remember, let God shape you and polish you as an arrow for his revival.